You guys might remember my Springfield Prodigy. I had the EGW ignition kit installed by Skip's Guns. Well, last night I installed the EGW stainless steel ambi safety. Now, it did have to be hand fit, but I think I did a pretty good job with it. So, we're gonna test it out today. Seems like it works good. It's way better than the original safety that was in here. Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Sawtooth Tactical, and it is always a good day when I get to go out and shoot the Prodigy, especially with new parts installed. EGW makes my favorite parts for the Springfield Prodigy for 2011s in general, or double stack 1911s, because Staccato does own the trademark for the term 2011. But the 2011 style pistol here, the Springfield Prodigy, it is, well, it's a budget 2011, right? But it is a great platform for upgrading, and I have slowly been making mine better and better. Originally, I sent this gun off to Skip's Guns, and he did a fantastic job. He put in the EGW ignition kit, an eight pound recoil spring and buffer, Atlas trigger that's tuned to 2.4 pounds, and it really, really just woke this gun up, made it that much better. But there was one part that still really bothered me about it that I should have just had done when I had all that done, but I didn't. I was trying to save money. And so I've been using the original safety that was in it for the longest time, and it was very mushy. When it was on fire, it would move around kind of the right side of it would walk out when I, you know, clicked it on and off safe all the time. And it was the one thing that disappointed me still in this gun, especially because I have another Springfield 1911 here and the safety on it is totally positive and super tactile in the way that a safety on a 1911 should be. And so I reached out to EGW. I told them that I was already using their ignition kit and that I loved it. And they sent me their stainless steel ambi safety. And I installed it myself. And I had to fit it myself. 1911, 2011 parts are hand fit. And I did it. And it worked out fantastic. And I'm really happy with it. So we're going to talk all about that. How much of a difference it makes when shooting. Because it actually really does. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna go into EGW and what they can do for your double stack 1911, especially like a Springfield Prodigy. So again, this is the longest intro of all time, but make sure you're subscribed and let's get into it. We've got no more metal injection molded parts in the Prodigy. Well, very, very minimal. We're slowly replacing everything with EGW. I think it looks a lot better, the stainless steel, but also it feels a lot better. I was not very happy with the squishiness of the original safety, and this one does not have that issue. I'd like to thank Aura, which is the sponsor of this video. You know, firearms can protect you and your family and your household from a lot of threats and provide you with a certain amount of security. Well, Aura can provide you with security from the things that you don't see and protect you from those threats. I've been using it for a few months now. When I first got it, I Googled my name and there was a lot of stuff that came up. And then I signed up with Aura and I watched as they took each and every one of those things off of the internet so that my information wasn't out there anymore. They do a lot of things, including identity and credit monitoring, password manager, antivirus protection, they have a VPN, home title monitoring, and then the big one is data broker removal. As you guys probably already know, scammers are a huge part of life now, which really sucks. But the way that they get your information is from data brokers. And Aura goes out there and they find those data brokers that have your information and they submit opt-out requests on your behalf 
removing your information off the internet so that scammers don't have access to you anymore. The big thing that it's helped me with is I don't get spam calls anymore. And I've noticed that over these last few months that I've been using it, I just have stopped getting spam calls. If you wanna support this channel, Sawtooth Tactical, the best way to do that is to sign up for Aura. You get two weeks free if you use my link, which is aura.com slash sawtooth tactical. And then it's only $12 a month for all of those things that I listed earlier. I really appreciate what Aura has done for the channel. And I appreciate that they sponsor firearms related channels. It says a lot to me about who they are. I value my privacy and I also value yours. The Springfield Prodigy, like I said, it's a budget 2011. And the way that they keep it under budget, Springfield Armory that is, is that they use metal injection molded internal parts. Now, MIM parts are probably perfectly fine. If you have any Glock, they're full of MIM parts. A lot of guns are. But 2011s are generally made with hand fit, you know, milled, machined steel parts. And the Prodigy's not. And so a lot of people like to upgrade this platform, myself included. Like I said, Skip's guns, he put in the EGW ignition kit. That's, you know, a lightened hammer, sear, you know, Atlas trigger, all this stuff. And it made a huge difference. It makes the gun just shoot way better. The trigger is so light and crisp. And with the lightened uh, recall spring and buffer, it just feels like it's on ball bearings. It's super smooth. I absolutely love this gun. Like I said though, the safety was the one disappointing thing. And disappointing for a couple reasons. For one, like I said, when I clicked it onto fire, it was just mushy. I could still move it around and the right side would walk out when I used it a lot. Besides that, it just has a small paddle here. I've got the original safety in this EGW package here. And you can see here, the paddles on it are just pretty small. And the proper way to shoot in 1911, 2011, is you use the safety as a gas pedal, as a recoil mitigation device. And that does a couple things for you. For one, mitigates recoil. You have control over the gun, the muzzle rise. But for two, it keeps you from accidentally putting it on fire, or on safe, I mean, while you're shooting. So that is generally considered to be the proper way to shoot this style of handgun. Well, the EGW has a much bigger paddle on both sides. So whether you're left-handed or right-handed, and I actually am left-handed, but I shoot right-handed, but either way, you're gonna have a solid paddle to put your thumb on. Now, like I said, you do have to hand fit it, and I did have to do that. So I got myself a file. And what I did, I don't have a jig. There is a jig that you can buy from 10.8 Performance Labs. Um, I don't have that. In fact, I didn't even know I was gonna need it when I got this sent to me. But I'm gonna show you up close what I did to fit it because it worked out perfectly. This thing is just super positive tactile clicks and it is solidly in fire and solidly on safe now. And it's, literally cured the one thing that I didn't like about my Prodigy. Even in its stock configuration, this Prodigy was a joy to shoot, but the more that we change up the parts for good higher end stuff, it's just that much more enjoyable to shoot. I absolutely love this gun at this point. One thing about the new safety is that it looks fantastic. So I really like the stainless steel look of the EGW hammer and the Atlas trigger. And so when I reached out to EGW, I did ask them for the stainless steel Ambi safety. We might have to do a stainless steel magwell on here, maybe even the slide lock slide release because I just think that the stainless and black looks fantastic. But I do want to talk about fitting this because if you do decide to get one of these safeties, you are going to have to fit it. 
1911, 2011 parts are not drop-in parts. When you build a Glock, a Glock or an AR, parts are mil spec, basically. They just drop in. Well, that is not true with these kind of guns. Everything has to work perfectly in unison. The trigger bar with the sear, with your you know, grip safety, with your thumb safety, with all these parts have to be fit together to work properly. And so if you see this safety here, and in fact, I'm gonna pull it apart. So this is the left side of it. And you can see it was machined and coated, but then you can see part of it right there that's filed off, that angle on it. So that part is normally a very sharp angle. And this is my original one. You could see where the, you know, the guys at Springfield Armory did the fitting on this one. And so all I did to fit this one is I literally just took it. And I mean, first I tried to fit it to the gun. I took off the grip safety here so that I could see into the back. I could see how it interacted with the sear and all that. And it wouldn't, you know, go into safe. So I did have to do some fitting. And so what I tried to do is I tried to just take this, put this one next to it, and find that correct angle, what it is, and then on my new safety, I filed away at it, slowly but surely. Every time I would take a little material off, I would refit it in here, see how it you know interacted with that sear, and I just slowly did that until I could put it on safe. And once I got to that point where I could put it on safe easily, I stopped because you don't want to go too far. If you take off too much material, you're going to have problems. A small file like this worked perfectly for it. I got it at my local hardware store and it worked great. And it was a very easy installation besides that fitting part. And even that was easy as long as you know how the parts are supposed to work and interact with each other. It's not difficult. And without the grip safety, you could see how they interact. And so it makes it easy to understand what you're trying to do. And then once I got it fitted, put the whole gun back together, see how it feels, and it is perfect. It is easy to actuate, but it is tactile and solid. You're not gonna do it on an accident, but it's not difficult either, and that is the way that it should be. And now when it's on fire, it doesn't move. This original safety here, when it was on fire, I could still like, push it down and it would just kind of jiggle and be mushy and kind of drove me crazy with the amount of money and time I've put into this gun that I had a part that was mushy and then like I said at the beginning this side would walk out the more that I used it and I'd always have to try to push them back together well with this one neither one of those is an issue so the one other thing you have to do when fitting it is this part right here. So this is how the safeties are held together in the gun. The male end goes inside the female end there. And this, it was actually a little bit loose on this one when I did it. So I put this end in a vise and I just slowly cranked it until it was tight enough that it held onto it correctly. And then I reinstalled it and it's been absolutely perfect. Dealing with this wind out here today is tough. But dealing with this prodigy is not. So you think a safety, why would I do a whole video on a thumb safety? Well, <coughs> excuse me, because it actually makes a big difference. It makes the gun feel higher quality now just because it feels the way it's supposed to but it also really improves the shooting experience because it has this bigger paddle and because the paddle doesn't move now when I put my thumb on it, it's just easier to sit there and control recoil with it, which makes a big difference when it comes to shooting. This is already a gun that recoils very little compared to like my striker fired polymer framed handguns. But you put a safety on it like this that you can really get a good grip on with your thumb it makes it even easier to control recoil, even when I'm not really doing my part with my grip, with my support hand, just having my thumb on that makes it easier to control the gun. And that makes a big difference. These big wide paddles, but they're not too big. They're not ridiculous. I see a lot of 2011s where people put these, in my opinion, kind of ridiculous paddle safeties on it. 
And I wanted to keep with the kind of, the right look in my opinion, because to me, aesthetics do matter. And part of the reason that I haven't gone super wild on this gun yet is because I like the aesthetic of it. Although the more I change it, the more I like it. So we'll see what we go from here. This is one of the things that makes me recommend the Prodigy to people even more than I did when I first got it. This gun's got a couple thousand rounds through it now. And throughout that time, the first thousand rounds were bone stock and I loved the gun even as it was. But since doing upgrades to it, every time that I get new, you know, EGW Atlas parts put in it, it just makes the gun that much better. And so that makes me recommend it even more because one of my favorite things about firearms is building them, customizing them, upgrading them. And so it's a, it's a satisfying thing to me to be able to take a gun that you already like and to be able to make it better. And that's kind of the whole point of the Prodigy in my opinion, is you can get into a quality 2011. I mean, it's got a forged frame, slide and barrel. And then you can put a little bit more money and time into it later on to make it even better, to make the gun shoot better, to make it feel better, to make it look better. And you can end up with a really, really high quality firearm without having to spend three grand all at once at the beginning. Yes, you might get into the $2,000 plus point at some point, but you didn't have to spend all that money all at once. And that's kind of where I'm getting now. Now, the question from here is, do I get ports for it? <laughs> I'm kind of thinking so, V8 ports maybe? I know a lot of people like to do big comp, like Skips Guns does the Plague comp, um, but I think the V8 ports just kind of look cooler, and so maybe we'll go there. I never felt like I needed a magwell for this gun just because of the shape of 2011 magazines, but you know, maybe a stainless steel EGW magwell. Maybe an extended slide release. Stainless steel, of course. I'm getting to the point where I kind of want to do more and more to just make this thing as good as it can possibly be. The more I shoot this thing and the more I upgrade this thing, the more I love this thing. And EGW, I think, makes my favorite parts. So the other thing about the EGW stuff is they send you everything that you need with it. So the safety came with this tool from 108 Performance Labs where this end of it makes it really easy to pry your safety out, your original one, or this one, because you do kind of have to take it in and out a few times until you get it fit just right. And then the other end of it is for pushing in your detent when you're reinstalling it. So this simple little tool really makes the job much easier because again, these are not drop-in parts. You have to, you're gonna have to file a little bit, fit it, see if it's there. Nope, pull it back out, file a little more, fit it again. You're gonna go through that a little bit because you don't wanna take off too much material. And so it's kind of slow going and you gotta make sure you do it right. And it also comes with all these pins and sleeves, which I didn't even use, but I could, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but all I really needed was the safety itself and it has made a huge difference. It feels right. There's nothing on this gun that I am disappointed in anymore. The safety feels good and I'm super happy with it. I want to thank EGW for sending this out to me. I sent them an email and they were like, sure. And they just sent it out. That I do really appreciate, especially because I already have paid for you know, their whole ignition kit in the past. Um, but I think that they make great parts. If you have a Prodigy and you want to take it to that next level, EGW, they make fantastic stuff for the Prodigy. Just know that you are going to have to do some fitting. So if you're not comfortable with that, send it off to somebody like Skips Guns and he'll do that for you. But if you are comfortable messing around with guns, try it yourself. You'll probably figure it out and it'll work just fine. You know, at this point, I feel like I probably could have done the ignition kit myself 
It's just that this gun was new at the time and I didn't want to mess it up. But you know what? If you mess something up, you can always just get new parts, right? I mean, I've built a bunch of guns now. Building guns is really fun and it's really satisfying. And so I highly recommend the Prodigy. I highly recommend EGW parts. It'll take your Prodigy to the next level. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Make sure you subscribe to Sati Tactical. Let me know about your Prodigy build, if you have a Prodigy build in the comments, and what you've done to it, and uh, what parts you use. If you use EGW, or if you use other stuff, or who you use to uh, you know, do ports, or comps, or Cerakote, or any other things. Let me know ideas that I should do to take this thing to even the next level. From Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.